Hello, and welcome back to the Tucker and Crowley Report. We have Franklin Tucker, longtime editor of the Belmontonian with us, and I'm Mike Crowley. Um, first off, apparently summer is here. The 4th of July holiday is coming up, and Franklin, we've just concluded a special town meeting. What can you tell us? That's right. It's, it's uh, about the, the longest time we've, we've spent with a town meeting, starting in... Uh, I believe it was April or May, right. and uh, we've 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 gone to eight days before the Fourth of July, which is uh, kind, of, kind of astounding. So uh, what we had was we had a special town meeting, and it had to do with uh, uh, a, a traffic mitigation and management um, study uh, agreement that uh, the town has with uh, McLean Hospital. Uh, this is goes back a quarter century, 1999, um, and it it basically. Um, uh, and basically, what, what what occurred uh, at special town meeting was is that they revamped uh, the agreement because uh, times have changed. You know, the, the uh, what was supposed to uh, right be regulated uh, never occurred in, in that on those two properties, which are, are zone three and zone four. Um, so, and what what occurred is that the um, um, <clears throat> Is that the developer who's going to develop that that area? North uh, Northland, isn't Northland it? Northland Residential. Uh, they stated that they could not that their financial people would not sign off on a on a draconian uh, traffic management um, uh, agreement uh, that would you know if if they violate um, um, the the guidelines they could lose parking spaces and. And, and be prevented from from moving in there. They didn't want that. The financiers, financial people said that that's that's not for us. So uh, the town and um, Northland and, Mc, and McLean um, uh, came together and, and did a, a program that would uh, solve that problem. Um, uh, what occurred is that um, uh, there were opposition to it, and um, uh, they there was an amendment to. Um, to this agreement, this new, this new agreement. And this was filed by Jolanta Eckert, a uh, right. town resident. That's right. She's from South Cottage Road, which is, uh, she's basically in a butter to what would be the, the uh, development at uh, Zone 3. Uh, she, um, and, um, <clears throat> so basically, she, she wanted to keep the um, agreement intact. Um, she said, look, uh, her argument was that we really don't have to go through town meeting to solve this issue. The select board can just simply sign off for a release that says we're not we're, we're not going to um, uh, enforce uh, the, uh, the, the 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 agreement. Now, and, didn't George Hall Town Council say that that wasn't actually the case? They well, I think what George was saying is that yeah, you can do it, but it's not really enforceable if the other side doesn't agree to it. And secondly. Um, you know, um, the finance, the finance people, people who are going to pay for this, would just go around and say, "Look, these are three, these are three people that can be out of their jobs, who could be long gone in three years. You know, we could have a brand new board who, who would change their mind. So we want something that is done um, in stone, basically, and that would be the town meeting making a vote on this. So the, she lost that. She kind of lost out on on that. And there was an argument that people. Yeah, generally were um, were questioning, and that was um, not only would the uh, traffic mitigation uh, agreement uh, be revised and you know dampened down on uh, Zone Three, but also Zone Four. Mm -hmm. uh, zone Four is uh, something that we don't know exactly what's going to go in there. I mean, there is speculation, and, and the developer has basically said what's going to go there, and that is basically putting a school in that area, uh, um, the Arlington School. Which is uh, for uh, you know uh, kids who have um, um, who have emotional problems and things like that, and yeah. it's a high school. And this this is a school that's already operating in, that's right. in, in the vicinity, right? That's right. It would, it would just basically move over from where it is right now, which is the main campus of McLean, and come to this area. Um, and um, they would also have a, a school for autistic children, um, and. Uh, then there'd be also speculate. There's also they would like to set aside sixty thousand square feet, in um, for uh, research and development. Mm -hmm. Now, and what what does that mean, frankly? That's whatever it wants to mean because no one has really come up to uh, McLean, and McLean and uh, said that uh, they want to they want to come there. Uh, it could be anything from you know uh, any kind of research and development. They just want to keep it open for that type of 
work. Now, <clears throat> uh, my, my, my question, Franklin, is, um, is, is that commercial research and development yeah, or? <coughs> it is commercial. It's, okay. It's, it's commercial and anything that's on uh, zone four will be taxable. And that's a part of the agreement from 1999. Okay. So this is a this is an important um, a little a little piece of, uh, of commercial real estate that's finally coming to Belmont. Um, now um, uh, we've also heard uh, uh, Elizabeth Dion, who is one of the great proponents of commercial uh, real estate. She says well, maybe we can go back into uh, into uh, Zone Four and see if we can even increase the amount of research and development. Because sixty thousand square feet, while it might sound a lot. Uh, it's really very small when it comes to medical or any kind of research like that. I mean, you only have to go to um, uh, Brighton and see where the um, where the uh, uh, the uh, repertory theater, the American Repertory Theater, they're building a new theater there mm -hmm. in Brighton, uh, and that's seventy thousand square feet. Okay. <laughs> so, so we're not, not not a very big space. So, but so people have legitimately said, why should we give up our rights to traffic mitigation? If we don't know what's going to go in there, so you, you had people, um, uh, you know, concerned not not concerned about um, parse, uh, zone three, and they they agree that they would like to see 115 um, uh, um, uh, residential units being built there. Um, Some of them affordable housing. Oh, very much, you know. I think it's 21 or 22 of the 150, and there's going to be mm. apartments for renters. You know, it's it's, it's always a the, the housing trust back in 19 uh, back in 2019 uh, did a great job and, and they um, had, had a, and, and basically what there's what, what what Rachel Heller who is who is one of the um, proponents of, uh, of of what's happening in, in zone three said you know this is a this is a friendly 40b you know which is which they can which a developer can do because we don't have 10 percent affordable housing in this in this community um, you know, they, they basically bent over backwards. The developer, um, uh, John Dowley, um, from Nor Northland Residential, he, you know, he bent over backwards and you know, did a lot what the town asked for. So this is a great win for everybody. And that's why I think in the end, um, the town meeting basically rejected the arguments from um, uh, uh, Ms. Eckerd and, and the others. Uh, it simply was that you're giving away too much uh, for something that you really don't know what's going to happen. I mean, you, if you delay it, you know, uh, Dolly had talked to uh, Roy Epstein, who is a select board member and somebody who has been a big supporter of this also, and said, this is dead. You know, why give up something that you have and for something you don't know what's going to be happening in the future? And that's why I think it, it got defeated. The, the amendment got defeated like 40 to 180. So uh, I think people, they, were, they, they received emails from uh, people who are promoting this uh, agreement and they and they and they it became pretty clear that uh, this is what they were looking at and also the Eckerts were uh, you know using some numbers and using things that were not all clear whether that was going to happen and one of their one of their um, things that they said that you know the, the Arlington school could bring uh, 2,000 students because of you know how many people can fit into there right now the school has 35 <laughs> so <laughs> we're not going to see a, a 1,000 percent increase so what, what, one of the interesting arguments from my perspective was that, um, you know, if, if the town, if town meeting had not approved the traffic mitigation plan, and the, if, new, yeah, the, the, new the new traffic plan. mitigation plan, and, um, it, you know, we, we, we have a, a developer, North, Northland Residential, that, that was willing to work with the town, but, but you know, if, if that approval was not received, then, then we were risking that anything could happen with that property um, yeah we had something in our hand you know and why 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 get rid of that and hope hope that you can get something better um when when we actually could get something worse with um uh, another 40 43 b process like right. we've seen at beatrice circle all right so um town meeting approved the traffic mitigation plan see and you in november all right. Town meeting <laughs> resumes, um, I believe it. Uh, 14th but, and 16th or 16th and 18th? Boy, Thanksgiving dinner. Okay. <laughs> All right. So next up, um, let's talk about uh, reconstruction of the Grove Street fields. Uh, where, where are things on that? Well, uh, I, um, if you ever want to go to a, a, a really uh, cool uh, uh, meeting of a uh, town 
town uh, a town commission or uh, <laughs> or anything like that. Go to the rec part. Uh, go to the rec commission. Uh, they held theirs at the uh, Underwood Pool <laughs> among screaming kids and 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 wet adults. Uh, it was pretty. It was great fun. Um, uh, what we heard is that uh, the fields are, um, are are getting done in Grove Street, which uh, which was uh, something that. Uh, I think it was a priority because it's in the in the west. It's in the eastern part of the of the town, um, and uh, right on the Cambridge line, basically. Um, and uh, it is complete. You know, the three baseball fields, uh, um, a brand new basketball court. Um, they, they took down. They they taken down all the fencing. I saw people playing and uh, and have a great 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 amount of time, a great amount of fun uh, in those areas. Um, just don't bring your dog. <laughs> don't put your dog in the baseball diamonds, you know. Uh, and uh, so this is a great, um, a, a great piece of news. But you know what I also heard at the at the rec commission was that um, you know there's only two people in the DPW who handle all the fields in town, not just Grove Street, all the fields. So, so does, does this mean, Franklin, that that going forward, you know, maintenance is is potentially an issue as it's been in the past? Oh, of course it is. I mean, it's it's just one of those things where you're trying to rest fields. You're trying to um, you're trying to make the fields available for uh, a lot of um, youth sports, a lot of just people who want to use it in the morning to walk their dogs. Um, and it it gets to a point where you just can't you just don't have that um, uh, coordination uh, that you really need. And uh, and it's just like uh, at, at, at this Friday's uh, select board meeting, where we're going to talk about. Um, uh, well, the, the board is going to talk about understaffing in many places in town, like the police department, the DPW. Um, it's 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 a real issue, and it's coming. Uh, it's going to have to be addressed, just like many things in um, in the rec department has to be have to be addressed. You know, the, the fields are themselves are are issues simply because who owns them and who maintains them. You know, is it owned by the schools? Is it owned? You know, you know. The rec department pays money to the schools mm -hmm. for Harris Field, but they can't use it. They can't schedule it. You know, you know, as one person said, you know, if we had the, the ability to uh, put like a youth, whatever, you know, some kind of youth sports thing or a, or a, an adult sports uh, league on Harris Field, we could pay for like um, the, the uh, entire uh, maintenance uh, budget for that field just by having that one group in there. So. There's there's going to be a, so issues that are going to uh, come up, and um, I think what the rec, uh, rec commission was saying is that uh, they're going to have to deal with it much sooner than later, and especially now that the CPC, um, the, the Community Preservation um, Commission uh, or committee, um, they they won't have that the amount of money that they used to, to to spend on things like this, you know, like tennis courts, fields, and fencing. All right, Franklin. So, so some good news, but um, we have to uh, be concerned about um, the future and how we maintain those fields. Yes. All right. So, um, let's talk about the MBTA communities plan. First, uh, first off, I wanted to say that this is going to be the summer of MBTA communities. Now, tell Period. me, tell me Period. why that is. Why, why have we got a continuing saga here? It's just going to be a. I mean, well, we have two very. Um, uh, we have two groups that have very legitimate concerns and who want to promote their concerns. And so by November, they want to see wh when this has to be done, the MBTA communities map for Belmont mm -hmm. looking one way more than the other. So what we have is uh, we have the people who, who developed this map, who were right. asked this, to develop the map. Th this was the MBTA adv advisories community. That's right. Or a committee. It's committee, and we're going we're gonna to repeat names here. Rachel Huller and uh, Roy Epstein were the co-chairs um, uh, on that. Right. They did a great job of identifying all the parcels and in town and how, how, you know, how close they have to be to the um, uh, transportation hubs, which is, you know, the two commuter rail lines. Um, and they did a really good job. I think everybody, there was a great amount of praise to, uh, on what they did. I think then you have another set of people. The, plan, the planning board. It, well, you, this now goes to the planning board. Okay. And, um, and uh, so um, let me just say that there's another group out there. Okay. And, and that is uh, 
led by um, I, well, led. Um, who's uh, one of the promoters of that group is uh, Elizabeth Dion. And she wants to make sure that even though she's a big supporter of the, and she says, we're going to pass the MBTA communities map, you know, why, and she's a big supporter of that. She's saying there, there are areas in town which we should really set aside uh, for commercial. And so let's not point these places out for housing. Let's just make them like a neutral area. The, the, know, the concern I, being that even even oh, even, even mixed use um, could take away from the, the extremely limited uh, commercial possibilities. Yeah, and we're, we're, we, exactly. We're not talking about big swaths of land. We're talking about you know very small areas that are near the Cambridge line, mm -hmm. the Frank French property, and also um, uh, the, the crates. Uh, oh, oh, it's the um, uh, the smelting place. Oh, <laughs> uh, pure coat. <laughs> pure coat. Why do they have a smelting in Belmont beyond me? But um, so they, um, it, it, it's very limited. You know, we're not talking about very big spaces, but it's important. Of, and this is what the supporters of, of uh, the commercial space, protecting the commercial spaces, every little bit counts. You know, if we show com uh, um, uh, developers that we will, will protect those spaces for them to build, you know, when bigger spaces open, and this is the, dream I think of a lot of people is that when West Belmont opens uh, opens up you know where the golf course is we can see developers saying oh well Belmont's a very friendly place to go let's let's talk to them you know let's not bypass them and go to so many of our neighboring communities like Lexington Arlington Watertown especially in Newton why don't we go to Belmont so let me ask you this Franklin and 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 um, you know, granted, these these are much larger areas that 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 Belmont could not possibly replicate simply because of their size. But we've we've seen extraordinary mixed and successful mixed use developments in neighboring in, communities in, in Arsenal Yards and mm -hmm. in in Watertown, in Assembly Row and Somerville, um, and and so I I think that that proponent proponents of the the, the map and the plan that came out of the MBTA advisories, com, MBTA community <laughs> advisories okay. committee, um, um, would would argue that that um, you know combining uh, com, combining commercial and housing development in the same space is not necessarily a problem and doesn't necessarily detract. Um, development is what what are your thoughts about that Franklin well you have to only look out the window here and look at Tati <laughs> where and where we swear you can look at Tati where you have housing on top you know, and you have a very successful restaurant on the bottom it, it, it actually does work and I think that's why people are, are saying yeah these are two competing views but we don't want one map well but I should say we don't want two maps okay we don't want two maps coming to special town meeting in November Pick one. They, right, so, so there, Franklin, there is a, there is a want. Now, now let me ask you. Map. Aren't, aren't we aren't we currently in a situation in which we actually have three maps in play now, or at least yeah. potentially in play? Yes. Um. um one of the uh, co-chairs um, of the uh, advisory group, uh, Roy Epstein, who is um, for the next couple of days still the chair of the select board. Um, he has been promoting his own maps. And, you know, they're very, very interesting, very detailed also. You can't complain, you know, he, he wanted to put those out there. He believes that, that this is a, a better uh, view of how housing should be in, in town. This is, and we should talk about housing. This is just aspirational housing, you know. Right, when the, we talk about 1650, the, the number of units that are coming to Belmont, that's just, you know, we're gonna make the zoning available for that now. Of housing, but, we don't. It doesn't that. mean that we, it comes. No, no. If any, if that came even to half of that amount, people would, you know, have a heart attack. Uh, um, so uh, what? What? Um, you know, what he what he is doing is he is promoting his version, and that caused a bit of a, 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 a brouhaha um, with uh, Elizabeth Dion uh, at the planning board, uh, at the recent planning board where um, he's, you know, he basically said that, you know, he made this map, but he used also the, he also used the town planner, Chris Ryan, to help him, you know, flush out the map. Now, 
he's he's putting this map out as a private citizen, not as a member of the not, select board. Not as a not as the chair of the select board. And if I tried to go into Chris Ryan's office and say, "Hey, Chris, help me out here," you know, Chris would go like, "Get out of here," you know. So, <laughs> so she was basically saying, "Are you overstepping your bounds in doing this?" And you know, she's trying to, and you know, and that that's a way of saying, "Look." you know you can you can promote this map but you know this kind of has a, an official stamp now on it you know chris ryan said this and this and this well um you know and now the the select board chair you know uh jeffrey Berenbaum, um is is the select a, a, a planning board i'm sorry planning board chair um promoting them already uh <laughs> jeffrey uh Berenbaum, uh is now caught up in this and you know, was he asked, you know, did, did, did he ask um, 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 Roy to, uh, Epstein to do this map? Or is he now saying, I, I never asked that. So it's just, it's just getting a little, there's, there's, I think everybody's just get, is a little on nerve because these maps are important, you know, and, and especially in the future. And uh, people want this to be on the up and up. And I, I so, might say one thing, you know, the, the, the uh, Rachel Heller, who is, who is a good support a promoter of of, of of the housing and 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 the, and the housing map that that they, they produced that she helped produce as part of the uh, MBTA okay. advisory that's right. community she, MBTA community advisories committee she she is she has just been very quiet <laughs> she's not saying so, anything on this so Franklin we're we're down to um uh you know really a few short months before we get into November that's right and, it's only four or five and enough. something has to be presented to town meeting. Um, for a decision, and um, this is now on the on the shoulders of the planning board. And, and so, how does this play out? I think what's what, what's going to happen is like what it, what every, everybody agrees that you can't bring two maps to to um, a pro a pro development a, a pro commercial or a pro housing map to town meeting. It just gets ugly very quickly. Um, so um, I think that I think cooler heads are going to prevail in the in the in the heat of the summer. <laughs> and there's going to be a, a detente, as they uh, said in the 1980s, between Russia and the United States. We'll have, okay. a, we'll have a detente. We'll, we'll go to Iceland and uh, uh, um, uh, some detente. And I think I think that that really works because I don't think anybody who has, and no one's really looking to 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 die on on a hill, on an MBTA hill. <laughs> All right, Franklin. So Fourth of July is coming up. Um, are we going to have a lot of action here in Belmont, or excitement, or is it going to be a quiet time? Man, it's it's uh, unless you're by the pool on the Underwood pool, uh, it's dead. You know, you could easily walk at four o'clock on Fourth of July. You could easily walk from from Concord Avenue um, at Bethel Temple at the at the Cambridge Line, walk all the way to Belmont Center, not get hit by a car. It is dead. You could have a picnic in Leonard Street. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, ranks will be open, which is good. You'll you'll want your ice cream, um, and if you if you're a member of the pool, that's always a good place to go. You can just throw your kids in there, and they have they have enough lifeguards, so uh, those kids are are pretty safe. All right, Frank, but thank you. So as always, you can find more of Franklin's reporting at BelmontTonian.com. Uh, be sure to tune in next time, and we will see you then.